Welcome again, everybody, and thank you for joining us this evening for the first session of Journey Down the Clackamas Conference. Um, I'm Gail Shalom. I'm the chairwoman of the Clackamas River Basin Council, and I'm also a natural resources scientist with Clackamas Water Environment Services. The Clackamas River Basin Council is celebrating our 25 year anniversary this year, and this conference is a fantastic way to kick that off. Um, since our founding in 1996, the council has worked as a non-governmental group of stakeholders working to protect and improve the Clackamas River Basin and its tributaries. Our mission is to foster partnerships for clean water and to improve fish and wildlife habitat and the quality of life for those who live, work and recreate in the Clackamas watershed. On behalf of the Basin Council, I'd like to thank our gold sponsor, Clackamas Water Environment Services, and I will put on my other hat now to speak about water environment services. <laughs> Clackamas Water Environment Services produces clean water and protects water quality for more than 190,000 people living and working in Clackamas County. We provide innovative water resource recovery services, stormwater management, and environmental education. We operate and maintain five water resource recovery facilities, 23 pump stations, and more than 360 miles of pipe. Each year we clean more than 7 billion gallons of water. In the process, we, we convert material that has long been considered waste into electricity and fertilizer. We also help reduce pollution in local rivers, streams, and wetlands caused by stormwater runoff. And we educate and assist community members from all walks of life, from developers, property managers, and homeowners to other government agencies, local businesses, and teachers and students. It's our job to ensure that our families and neighbors enjoy the benefits of safe, healthy water for generations to come. I would also like to thank our bronze sponsors, Clackamas River Water Providers and the Geological Society of the Oregon Country, as well as many individuals who have donated to support the conference. Uh, this conference will be running for about a year. And so there will be multiple opportunities to donate if you also would like to support the conference, um, either as an individual or as an organization. Uh, and you can find out more information about that on our website, which is clackamasriver.org. And now I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the Clackamas Basin and all the lands from which we join this meeting have been occupied by native peoples since time immemorial. The Clackamas Basin is originally the territory of the Clackamas, Malala, Kalapuya, and other peoples and is currently recognized as land of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde, the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs, and other peoples, uh, other Native peoples who may not be federally recognized. We thank those who came before us for their stewardship of the land and water, and those who continue to steward them now and into the future. I would also like to welcome elected officials who have joined us this evening including Clackamas County Commissioner Martha Schrader, and a special thank you to Commissioner Schrader for participating on the steering committee and communicating with Senator Ron Wyden's office, Clackamas County Commissioner Paul Savis, Clackamas County Commissioner Sonia Fisher. I'm not sure if she's joined yet, but she did register. Um, we have Clackamas County Treasurer Brian Nava, and City of Sandy Councilor and Clackamas County or Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District Director, Jan Lee. Uh, we are gathered for this journey down the Clackamas Conference to learn in-depth information about the basin and also to connect so that we can help support each other in our collective work to protect and improve the Clackamas River and to share our passion for this amazing watershed that many of us call home. And those of us who don't call it home hopefully live close enough to be able to visit it often. CRBC is partnering with the Environmental Learning Center at Clackamas Community College. Workshop attendees will receive CCC continuing education units and you can request a signed certificate of completion. 
All right, we have a very special guest via video to help us kick off our conference. Senator Ron Wyden has served the state of Oregon since 1996 and authored laws extending permanent wilderness protections to more than 400,000 acres, including Mount Hood, the Columbia River Gorge, and the Bull Run Watershed. He has championed the designation of almost 2,000 miles of wild and scenic rivers in Oregon, more than any other members, member of Congress overall for the contiguous 48 states. He's helped Oregon secure the most wild and scenic river designations in the lower 48. Together with Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley, Senator Wyden has proposed in February the River Democracy Act of 2021, which would add nearly 4,700 miles of Oregon rivers and streams to the National Wild and Scenic River System. We are honored to have Senator Wyden, the champion for Oregon rivers, help us inaugurate our conference about the incredible Clackamas River. Hello, everybody. Ron Wyden here. Thanks to the Clackamas River Basin Council and Commissioner Martha Schrader for giving me the chance to virtually join your journey down the Clackamas Conference today. I applaud all of you for coming together for the Clackamas River Basin. Rivers like the Clackamas are the lifeblood of Oregon. They provide clean drinking water, are home to endangered species like salmon, and boost local yeah. economies through the outdoor recreation economy. The river has thousands of years of history. It is iconic to indigenous Oregonians and a major recreation destination for the people of Clackamas County in Northwestern Oregon. The fires that ripped through the Clackamas River Basin and the Riverside Fire back in September were a shock. I'm working on the River Democracy Act, which will bring more resources to protect river corridors, homes and businesses from wildfire risks. And it would also bring resources to help watershed kelp and drinking water in these areas should a fire occur. Like you, I want to see these rivers and your communities protected for generations to come. I hope everybody has a terrific conference. Hope to see you on the river soon. Thank you, Senator Wyden, for your inaugural message and your support of our rivers. The River Democracy Act of 2021 would add almost 70 miles of wild and scenic river protection to the Clackamas watershed. All right, I think we're ready to start our presentations for the evening. Remember to type your questions into the chat, keep yourself muted, and we will answer questions after each presentation. Our first presenter tonight is David Bugney. David is a member of the Clackamas River Basin Council Board of Directors, representing the interests of small woodlot owners in the basin. He chaired the committee that developed this conference, and actually this conference was really his brainchild. A resident of Estacada, David and his wife, Marianne, earned the commendation of the Clackamas County Farm Forestry Association's Woodland Farmer of the Year, as well as the Oregon Department of Forestry and Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Fish and Wildlife Steward Award, both in 2020, for their innovative management and forest and stream stewardship techniques on their property. David and Marianne's efforts have paid off. They've reported that beavers, salmon, and steelhead had, have returned to their segment of Souter Creek, and they have some really cool videos to prove it too. Now let's wake, welcome David Bugney to present about the conference and his vision for what we can accomplish together. Take it away, David. Thank you. Hopefully you can hear me fine, and good evening all. And we welcome you to this first of 33 webinars which will extend through May 31st of next year. Please sit back and enjoy this presentation. And uh, to pique your interest for the next months ahead, I will present in a series of 12 slides, a brief overview of what we'll cover, as well as why and how uh, this will be accomplished. We hope you'll find the presentations uh, worthwhile and following safety protocols and armed with all the new knowledge you're gonna get you and your family will get on out there and enjoy to a, nature to a level that you haven't been able to uh, experience before. So first off, you know, the question is, why do we decide to undertake this series of webinars? Well, what was our motivation? And uh, an educational conference devoted to the Clackamas River Basin has never been attempted before. So we believe it's, it's about time that something like this was done. And more and more folks are using our streams and rivers within the basin 
and undoubtedly enjoy their experiences more with a deeper understanding of this area. The webinars have been arranged to present a bottom up view of the basin, starting with the foundational geology and working up from there. Generally, each webinar will build upon the previous webinars, demonstrating the inter interconnectedness of the topics. It will be a journey through space of over, or excuse me, a journey through time over millions of years and space from Alali Butte near Mount Jefferson to its mouth at Clackamas Park near Oregon City and Gladstone. How is this basin different and in many respects unique from others in Oregon, such as the Rogue, Umpqua, or Deschutes? As demographic pressures increase on our ground and surface waters, Clackamas County's population, for instance, has increased from about 280,000 in 1990 to over 420,000 today. The Clackamas River Basin Council's Board of Directors decided to present a broad overview of it. The aim for those attending these webinars is to acquire an enhanced appreciation of our beautiful area and to become better stewards of it. All this, and we'll be able to enjoy it much, much more. So the top photo that you see uh, there was is what, taken in one of my favorite places where our family lives, the Salmon Huckleberry Wilderness, uh, much of which was in the uh, was in the Clackamas River Basin. Here I photograph one of our neighbors. If you can see him, he's uh, in the lower middle of the photo enjoying the ancient forest there in the Salmon Huckleberry. Six of our webinars will focus on our forests. The bottom photo is of a beautiful, naturally arranged grouping of down logs in Low Creek. And this creek flows into the upper Clackamas River. It's a wonderful example of what many small creeks historically looked like prior to logging trees near the creeks or pulling logs out of the water. And for scale, if you look at those fallen logs in the background, those are about four to five feet across, so they're, they're quite large. In future webinars, we will learn why leaving such wood in, in the creek or near the creek, where, where we can do that, where it's possible is important, particularly for fish and for maintaining colder water temperatures. So we're gonna cover numerous topics in the next year in, in order to provide you with a 360 degree view of our basin. So I thought I'd go over some of those. So we'll begin with on the left side there, uh, geology and the geologic hazards of our, of our basin. In this series of four sessions, we'll kick off with an introduction to Western regional geology, and then focus on the geology of the Clackamas River Basin itself. The diagram on the left is part of a geologic map of the Western portion of our basin, and each color represents a different foundational primary rock type. Quite an amazing variety as you, as you can see. The thumbtacks indicate our stopping points along the way where local geology will be discussed on our geologic journey up the Clackamas and what you may enjoy on a future road trip, like the Roadside Geology of Oregon books. What are the differences between these different rock formations and, and what stories do they tell us of our past? Known geologic hazards such as landslides and earthquakes will also be addressed. If we look on the right side of the screen, and we move into a presentation about the soils and soil groups of our basin. What are soils to begin with and why are some good for growing crops and some trees and others not? How are soils affected by wildfires as we saw last year? How did floods and glacial epochs millennia ago shape the soils we see today? And what can you do to help steward and conserve our soils? This figure begins to show how our topics that I was, we're gonna be talking about are all inter interconnected. So if you look closely, you'll see that uh, at the bottom, the R or, or rock horizon forms the basis of our soils. And it's not a separate, but it's integral part of the soil profile. So we'll have touched upon previously related uh, entities like that in the geology section of our, of our seminars. Next, we're going to be talking about the field of geomorphology, and that'll be presented. And geomorphology is just a fancy term for the study of the physical features of the Earth's surface and their relation to geological structures. So natural that we talk about that next. This illustration is perfect for our basin because uh, the Clackamas' headwaters begin up in the Cascade Mountains and then flow through the mid-elevation foothills and finally down to the lower elevations into the Clackamas with the Willamette River near Oregon City and Gladstone. What particular characteristic does our water should have in each of these areas? And so we're gonna learn about that. And if you look at the right, uh, moving on the science of hydrology, which is the study of the properties of the Earth's water and especially its movement with relation to land. 
So this subject is important when trying to understand and appreciate the behavior of aquatic life, particularly the fish species within the basin. This photo of Eagle Creek within the Salmon Huckleberry Wilderness is a good example of how the science of hydrology at its core is really, to me, quite beautiful. No discussion of our basin would be complete about talking, without talking about agriculture on the left side of the screen. The earliest European American pioneers traveled along the Oregon Trail to get to the fertile Willamette Valley. And you know, prior to ending up in the Oregon City area or moving on parts south, many would stop at the Philip Foster Farm in Eagle Creek to recover and resupply. Farming played a major role in the building of our communities and we'll present an overview of our county's agriculture, including its economic importance, variety of crops grown and how the climate and environment interact with my modern agriculture and how modern agriculture affects them. The photo there is of a, a beautiful lavender field growing on a farm between Oregon City and Estacada looking toward Mount Hood. If we look at the right side of the screen, with our climate changing, it's wise to know the range of responses that our area may have to these changes. Studies focusing on climate change effects in our basin, as well as within the entire Pacific Northwest are currently ongoing. We will be brought up to speed with the latest research findings and recommendations to help prepare ourselves and our descendants for what might occur in the decades to come. What are our local governments doing or should they be doing to harden our infrastructure to respond to these So these we'll be, we'll be talking about. These two graphs in particular from a recent Portland State University study about the basin are relevant. The top graph depicts the number of days per year below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So for example, uh, in 1950, there were about 110 days where minimum temperatures fell below this level. And then you can see this trend is clearly decreasing. And similarly, the bottom graph shows the number of days per year that have maximum temperatures exceeding 90 degrees. And you can see here, the trend is increasing. And we will have six presentations on forest topics. And here, my wife, Marianne, is for scale in front of that Douglas fir tree. And like agriculture, our forests of huge Douglas fir, western hemlock, and western red cedar also help build our communities. And we'll begin with an introduction to the types of forests that exist in the basin. Whoops, sorry about that. A little excited there. Uh, let's see, so we'll be brought up to speed with the latest research findings. Uh, hold on there a minute. <laughs> Back up. Okay, let's see. So we'll begin with an introduction to the types of forests that exist in the basin, how they've changed over time, and what we might expect in the future as our forests adapt to a changing climate, including wildfire topics, of course. Webinars will feature topics on forest wildlife and how important forests are to providing shade canopy over the streams to keep their waters cool. The critical role forests play in maintaining clean water and air, the differences between ancient and managed forests, and carbon sequestration and storage are also topics we'll be talking about. As forest landowners ourselves, these topics are very relevant to our family as we sustainably manage our forest land and we want to learn more to become better stewards of it. The largest number of webinars as we look to the right side of the screen will focus on ground and surface waters in our basin. And we'll begin our discussion with a session on water chemistry and water quality. And we'll be talking more than just about the water quality standards that we've set to ensure safe drinking water. We'll, we'll be also talking about how rocks, soils, and plants affect the chemistry in, of both the ground and surface waters. And the figures are right. You can see just a portion of the steps required to effectively withdraw and treat water from the Clackamas River Basin, which feed over 300,000 residents within our county every day. Humans are not the only organisms that require safe water. Aquatic life such as the steelhead also do too. And after we gain a good understanding of the properties of our water, we will move into webinars dealing with the fish related topics. And these will range from an overview of the natural history of our anadromous fish species. And anadromous is just a fancy term to describe those species migrating from the sea back up into freshwater to spawn such as our salmon, Pacific lamprey, and steelhead, to an overview of the fish hatchery activities, the effects of hydropower infrastructure, what fish spawning surveys are telling us, and the many methods used for effective stream and fish habitat restoration. We'll also have webinars on natural stream 
modifiers such as beavers and landslides, as well as the importance of wetlands within our basin and their critical functions. The photo on the left is of a late run coho taken within PGE's fish sorting facility at the North Fork Dam on the Clackamas. This facility sorts naturally spawned fish from hatchery rib fish, returning the hatchery rib fish downstream, letting the more wild fish continue on upstream. This has effectively created a, as close as it can be achieved a wild fish sanctuary for salmon and steelhead upstream of PGE's North Fork Dam. The statistics of its operation indicate that the program is a great success. When we look at the right side of the screen, when dealing with any resources that have public use associated with them, over the years, laws and stewardship rules or guidelines have been developed. And we'll discuss these and determine which public policy measures are working well, which are not, and which, what should be done going forward. We will welcome your input on these matters. After all, this basin is for all of us and, and we all want everybody's, we want everyone's input. The map on the right, as Gail was talking about a little earlier on, depicts the current uh, in purple and proposed in blue federally designated wild and scenic rivers within Oregon. The proposed additions are part of Senator Wyden's and Senator Merkley's 2021 River Democracy Act, which she also talked about, which was introduced in Congress last month. I circled with the red ellipse the area within the Clackamas River Basin, and there are about five or six really nice additions, hopefully, that will get uh, solidified. Following the firm grounding in the natural history aspects of our basin, we'll move on into socioeconomic topics. How do we use our basin for pleasure and for work? Have certain demographic groups been underrepresented in our river community? And if so, how should, how should we tackle that? As our country itself as a whole strives to deal with topics related to social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion, our county's residents must also become involved in this discussion as well. And on the right, lastly, we'll provide a webinar on Native American history and culture. The many American, excuse me, the many Native American tribes that historically inhabited our basin are now represented by the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde and of Warm Springs. How do these Native peoples effectively steward this area for thousands of years, developing a sustainable economic base? Which tribes lived where and which languages were spoken? I mean, to me, this is just fascinating stuff. What are they doing today and what can we learn from them? The answers to these questions and more will be explored. And we got some key points that I just wanted to go over about our conference just to get your interest uh, peaked about them. All subjects uh, that I discussed will be presented in 33 webinars, each focusing on the Clackamas River Basin. And this is the first one tonight. The last will be a wrap up round table panel discussion summarizing much of what we learned and where we go from here. That's where we take everything that went on and, and see where we go forward, how to make things better. Sessions will range in length from one to two hours, from 10 to 20 minutes of Q&A, depending upon the session length. Funding permitting, the sessions will be held on Tuesdays on a biweekly basis. You can just mark it in your calendar, beginning today and extending through May 31st of 2022. The conference will be administered by the Clackamas River Basin Council. The structure, format, and content of this conference was developed by a 17-person steering committee, as was mentioned, representing many stakeholders within our basin. Interests range from local, state, and government officials to Native Americans and university research to agriculture, forestry, fisheries, and hydropower. We met online throughout the fall, and I can tell you, truly, it was an honor working with all those folks. It was just really, really, really a cool experience. All sessions are free of charge to allow any interested person to attend, regardless of socioeconomic status. The presentations are designed for the general audience, ranging in age from young adults to senior citizens. And as previously was discussed, the CRBC is partnering, partnering with the Environmental Learning Center at Clackamas Community College. And conference attendees may receive CCC continuing education units if they desire, and can also request a signed certificate of completion for each session. A little bit about format, speakers, and technology. All the sessions, as you're seeing here, are live and will be held over Zoom. Sessions will be recorded for viewing later in YouTube, but we encourage you to attend the live webinars to have the opportunity to ask questions during Q&A if you like. And, and besides, you know, like anything else, there's nothing like a live presentation. So therefore, there's no geographic or time barrier to attend. And two tracks will be offered, or I call them tracks. Uh, 
Most sessions will be track one, which is an, again intended for the general audience and probably 75 to 80% of the webinars will be geared that way. Some sessions will be track two intended for a more technically oriented audience such as scientists, engineers or public policy makers, but certainly anybody can listen in. It just might be a little higher level. Track one sessions will be held at 6 p.m. every night like tonight's and after work hours. So you can come home and, and, and have your meal or beforehand or during. Track two sessions will be held during the workday for the business professionals, but again, anyone's entitled to attend. Speakers will be coming from all over the United States. Many are experts in their field with firsthand knowledge of the Clackamas River Basin. So I mean, probably a lot of you have been to conferences where you know somebody might be talking about a particular topic which really has little relevance to where it is where we live. Well, the idea here was to not have that kind of problem. That comes that we'll be seeing, whoops, yep. Is that ended, the attendees will leave with a greater appreciation of the Clackamas River Basin and its significance, including the air, the forest, land, and streams to how we interact with them and how we interact with each other. We also hope you'll gain knowledge about each topic that interests you, allowing you to become better stewards of the basin and learn to seek out additional information or becoming more active in protecting and advocating for this important natural resource. You know, on a personal note, as, as a number of you know, Prior to retiring, I was a consulting structural engineer, helping clients to design projects ranging from semiconductor chip plants to schools and hospitals to bridges and fish related structures. I believe I served my clients the best by gaining as much knowledge as I could about their industry or practice and aid in providing them with the best solutions that I could think of. And the more I understood about them, the better solution I could craft. In many ways, a conference like this is quite similar, at least in my view. I hope that over the course of this upcoming year, you will learn about the many aspects of our basin, including its rich history, and from its rocks and soils to forests and fish to better enjoy, engage, and engage, and advocate for it even more. It's our version of a, of a Clackamas Public Library about, about this amazing basin. If the conference is well received, we'd like to continue it in the future present new topics or expand upon those topics that we only touched upon this upcoming year. Please drop us a line to let us know if you have any suggestions for additional topics or which topics we should present in greater depth. This information all, after all is for you, it's for everyone. So in closing, this, this concludes my introduction to this conference and I really appreciate you taking the time to listen and please check out the CRBC website frequently for updates for program offerings and I look forward to seeing you in the future and please consider inviting some of your friends to attend these webinars. Everyone's welcome to register and attend. I mean, even if we reach just 1% of our county, that's over 4,000 people and I'll consider that a great success. And given the variety of topics that we'll present, I guarantee everyone's gonna learn something. So with that, I, I leave it with any questions. I think we did, we did have one question in the chat box uh, about uh, what does the Wild and Scenic uh, designation mean and what will it change going forward for the Clackamas? Um, so the Wild and Scenic designation, first of all, it's available to free flowing rivers. So it has to be a section that has no dam or really other serious alteration on it. And I believe that the purpose of the national wild and scenic river system is to preserve rivers that have some kind of outstanding feature and there are these different categories so it's got to fall into one of these categories um, natural cultural and recreational values um, in a free-flowing condition um, and i believe again it, it it protects the river from ever being dammed and also protects a buffer of a certain distance, maybe in most cases, I think it's a quarter mile and in some cases can be up to half a mile of buffer that gets protected around the river. Do you have anything you wanna to add to that, David? Yeah, I could add to that a little bit. I, I think that was an excellent overview. And I would just go on to say that uh, given the, the pace of the introduction of the 2021 uh, River Democracy Act that uh, if you're those that are interested in learning more about it, if you see any areas that are on the map, for example, that I displayed that aren't on your mind, if you're your radar screen, if you've been to a particular area, you know, wherever it is in Oregon, doesn't necessarily have to be in the Clackamas River Basin, you think should be nominated for that list, uh, please write Senators Merkley and Wyden a, a little note telling them that you'd like to nominate another area because it, 
you know, the game, the, it's not closed yet. So that's what I'd like to say. All right. Well, thank you very much, David. And I hope that whetted everybody's appetite for uh, future sessions of our conference. Um, let's see, do we have a poll to put up? Uh, okay. Take a look at the poll and please answer. What are you most excited to learn about through attending the Journey Down the Clackamas Conference? So how I can get involved in watershed stewardship, the geology of the basin, how our water quality is, fisheries and endangered salmon, how climate will change our watershed and opportunities in agriculture and forestry, um, or connecting with other waterfed, watershed professionals. Uh, so it looks like 31% of you guys are interested in knowing how you can get involved in watershed stewardship. That is excellent because we have lots of ways with CRBC. Uh, lots of folks are interested in geology, 57%. Looks like the second most popular topic is gonna be climate change. Um, oh no, actually, 58% more people are interested in native people and cultures of the Clackamas Basin, closely followed by geology and climate. We've got water quality at 48%, update on fisheries and endangered salmon. And um, there's hardly a topic that people don't wanna know more about. What's the best secret fishing hole in the watershed? Well, we'll have to see if, if we can get some folks to share that secret information. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it looks like there's going to be something for everybody in this conference. <laughs> All right. So I think we are ready to move on to our next speaker. Uh, our next presenter, Cheryl McGinnis, has been the executive director of the Clackamas River Basin Council since July 2006. She has a Master of Business Administration from Oregon State University and a Bachelor of Science in Education from University of Oregon. She has over 16 years of experience in nonprofit management, governance, program development, fiscal management, volunteer coordination, and staff supervision. So basically everything a nonprofit does. <laughs> Under Cheryl's leadership and her focus on successful partnerships, the CRBC has grown in its capacity by leaps and bounds. So please join me in welcoming Cheryl to talk more about the Clackamas River and the work of our Basin Council. Take it away, Cheryl. Thank you, Gail. I'll get my screen share going. Uh, and uh, thank you again, Gail. I too welcome each of you to the Journey Down the Clackamas Conference Series opening night. It's great to have over 100 of you in attendance. And we are so thankful for Senator Wyden's opening remarks. He has commented about the Clackamas Basin as a tremendous natural resource for our state and region, something that we'll talk more about tonight. The Senator builds consensus with comprehensive bipartisan solutions and since 2000 authored and supported uh, in continuation the Secure Rural Schools and Community Self-Determination Act to provide stable source of revenue for timber communities such as ours. I also want to give a special tribute to David Bugney who conceived this conference series and with his committee convened an exceptional selection of topics for a full 16 month plus program. You all, over 100 of you tonight and over 175 registered, will certainly enjoy the wealth of knowledge and expertise that uh, will be shared by the volunteer speakers. I'm excited to present highlights of this gem, the Clackamas River, and share an overview of the CRBC also referred to Clackamas River Basin Council, who we are, what we do, and what opportunities there are for your involvement to address that uh, interest in stewardship activities. The Clackamas River is a gem within Oregon with its agriculture, commerce, fisheries, forestry, industry, recreation, along with urban and rural lifestyles. It truly is a microcosm of Oregon. 
Previously inhabited and enjoyed by indigenous peoples, the watershed is now 72% public land ownership. Some of you did um, select that amount. 25% is public, is privately owned and 3% tribal ownership. The National Wild and Scenic Designations recognize our river for outstandingly remarkable values. Oregon has approximately 110,000 miles of rivers, of which nearly 2,000 miles are designated as wild and scenic. <clears throat> Over 100 of those miles are in the Clackamas, including on the Upper Clackamas, the Clackamas South Fork, the Kalawash <clears throat> on Eagle Creek, Fish Creek, and along the Roaring River and its South Fork. Of these, a little over 30 miles are designated wild, 31 as scenic, and 47 miles as recreational, all of which are upriver of Estacada and within public land areas. The purpose of these designations that was asked earlier is to protect areas with outstandingly remarkable values and maintain and enhance the natural integrity of river related values. There are also wilderness areas as David shared earlier um, as he shared um, the area within Eagle Creek subbasin, uh, the Salmon Huckleberry Wilderness Area. There's also the Clackamas and Bull of the Woods. <clears throat> Our Clackamas populations um, include uh, within the Clackamas River um, as a home to genetic legacy fish populations of coho, spring and fall Chinook, and steelhead, and identified as a salmon stronghold. The counts of migrating fish, PGE is seen this year, hit record numbers since counting began in 1958 when their counts um, were initiated. And so this year they're far exceeding 10 year average returns. The Clackamas is a high priority area and federally recognized critical habitat for salmon recovery. A federal register volume 76, number six, reports that the Clackamas River Coho is the only population of the Lower Columbia River Coho designated populations that is approaching viability. Another reports that of the distinct population segments of Spring Chinook within the Willamette Basin, the Clackamas and McKinsey, excuse me, McKinsey populations show significant returns of naturally produced fish. Author Rudyard Kipling said of his times in the Americas, I have lived. The American continent may now sink under the sea, for I have taken the best of it. And the best was neither dollars, love, nor real estate. The famous author made this claim after spending a day steelhead fishing on the Clackamas in 1889. Some believe that he was fishing for fall Chinook. Our stakeholder interests and uses of the Clackamas River include agri agricultural interests such as Christmas trees and nurseries. Clackamas County leads both acreage and sales of Christmas trees in the US and is the nation's second ranked county in nursery acreage and, uh, sorry, uh, the nursery stock acreage. Timber harvest is an important industry in our area and began in the early 1800s. Current harvest and regeneration techniques are designed to reduce negative impacts on the watershed. The Clackamas is the drinking water source for over 300,000 people. Sometimes we hear it's more close to 400,000. That's 10% of Oregon's population. There are five municipal surface water intakes on the Clackamas. From these, public water districts provide water to residents of both Clackamas 
and Washington counties and the communities of Estacada, Happy Valley, Damascus, Tigard, Lake Oswego, Clackamas, Gladstone, Oregon City, and West Lynn. Forestry, forestry is a prominent industry in our county, including federal forests, commercial forests, and private timber forests. Public lands in the watershed are predominantly forested and provide protections for water quality from the shading they provide the waterways, reducing erosion through their root systems and providing climate resiliency. Fisheries in the Clackamas Basin include fish hatcheries, reintroduction of bull trout in the uh, upper watershed with stock from the Metolius River and acclimation ponds in the lower basin. You will hear more about this and our um, legacy fish in future conference uh, classes. Hydroelectric power facilities include three hydroelectric dams that PGE operates on the Clackamas River main stem. Faraday, just east of Estacada, River Mill, west of Estacada, and the North Fork upstream from Faraday. These dams have adult fish passage facilities, which David was showing you a picture of and explaining that a bit. We'll hear more about that. Faraday and River Mill also have juvenile fish bypass facilities. Recreation pursuits abound in our watershed, and which is referred to as Portland's backyard. The Clackamas supports fishing, hunting, hiking, camping, whitewater, rafting, kayaking, and floating. Clackamas County Tourism highlights activities as part of their Oregon's Mount Hood territory. Explorers welcome in their promotions for such things as the Pacific Crest Trail entry points, hiking and biking routes, including the Cascading, Cascading Rivers bikeway, bikeway, a challenging 69 mile route and part of Oregon's 15 scenic bikeways. The watershed has miles of whitewater opportunities, presents attractive fly fishing and other wildlife pursuits. The basin includes 941 square miles, is a tributary of the Willamette with its confluence at River Mile 25. Geographic boundaries include two counties, Clackamas and Marion. The Clackamas flows 82.7 miles from its headwaters on the slopes of Olali Butte to the confluence of the Willamette River, to which our river contributes colder water. The Clackamas has 16 sub watersheds providing 295 miles of stream habitat for spring and fall Chinook, winter coho, steelhead bull trout, along with Pacific lamprey and other resident fish species. The upper watershed runs through forested areas over rugged terrain with deep canyons. Geologic features of the Western and High Cascades influence water flows and quantities. The lower river and tributaries flow through agricultural lands and densely populated areas at its westernmost reach. Key concerns of the watershed include, um, are based on changes to the river, its tributaries and watershed health show degradation from development, land use, overuse of an overloved river. Water quality standards are violated due to elevated summer water temperatures, presence of E. coli and habitat modifications. Water supply withdrawals must be balanced to maintain sufficient in-stream flows that support fish species, wildlife, human use, and other beneficial uses. Natural spawning and anadromous fish species are federally listed as threatened and endangered as a result of violations to water quality and the habitat modifications. Habitat is impacted by multiple land uses, such as agricultural practices, timber harvests, and urban development. Urban growth in the watershed can have negative water quality impacts, such as from flashy and pollutant-laden stormwater runoff as impervious surfaces are increased from parking lots, roads, rooftops, and the like. Climate change and creating resiliency from the impacts are important for our attention and action. 
So we have a lot to protect, the quality of the water, the fish that live in it, and for all of us humans, receiving the many benefits of drinking water, recreation pursuits, and quality of life, water resources, protection is vital to our existence. As such, much of our time is spent working with partners to do just that. A sampling of our partnering groups that collaborate to plan programs, develop policies, inform the public, and implement projects that protect and restore the watershed include a brief list here, the Clackamas Partnership, Clackamas Stewardship Partners, ODA and DEQ Pesticide Stewardship Program, ODA Clackamas Local Agricultural Water Quality Committee, many agencies within the county that we work with very closely. And then there are several restoration action plans with specific action actions included. They, um, they include such uh, plans as the Lower Columbia River Plan, Upper Willamette River, Oregon Plan for Salmon and Watersheds, Oregon Conservation Strategy, a Clackamas Restoration Action Plan, Clackamas River Basin Action Plan. And so this brings me to a point where I get to share who we are as a Watershed Council. You've heard our mission and I will um, recite it again. Our mission is to foster partnerships for clean water to improve fish and wildlife habitat, enhance the quality of life for those who live, work, and recreate within the Clackamas River Basin. PRPC is incorporated in the state of Oregon and is a 501c3 charitable nonprofit invested in res restoring and protecting the river and its tributaries. Our council has been working as stewards of the watershed for 25 years. Our work activities are focused on priorities from a basin action plan, which was completed in 2005 and has received frequent updates on specific restoration actions to pursue. Most recently in 2018 and with additional assessments such as one begun in August of 2020. We work with many partners because water is a shared resource. We collaborate with local, state, and federal partners on the best ways to improve our watershed. In today's complex and developing landscape, these partnerships are becoming more and more important. Our board of directors are important to us. The Clackamas River Basin Council is supported by a dedicated volunteer board of directors 23 in all, I'll give you time to read through who they are and what stakeholder groups they represent. A few of our directors have been with our organization since it was chartered 25 years ago. We benefit from their insight, knowledge, and respective expertise to get our work done. Watershed councils in Oregon include over 90 recognized watershed councils throughout the state. The Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board, also referred to as OWEB, and watershed councils are legislatively established in the Oregon plan with goals to guide and support our citizenry in achieving watershed health. And I may add the soil and water conservation districts are included in that legislative uh, language. Um, so the goals that guide are to provide for coordination of local, state, federal, and tribal agency responsibilities and authorities for native Salmonid watershed and habitat restoration throughout Oregon. To rely on watershed councils and soil and water conservation districts, which are directed to cooperate in the development of local watershed plans that assess watershed conditions and create action plans and strategies for the implementation of the local watershed action plans and focus state policies and resources on achieving native salmonid recovery and watershed restoration while sustaining a healthy economy and environment. The Clackamas River Basin Council was authorized by Clackamas County Board of County Commissioners on October 24th, 1996, making this year our 25th anniversary, as Gail mentioned earlier. And our watershed, if you see my cursor, you probably all have identified it, you know our state well, is right there. 
our partners. Our success is dependent upon partnerships in the watershed, sharing expertise and co coordinating all of our efforts. Much of our funding and support comes through grant awards from the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board, Clackamas County, Water Environment Services, Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District, Oregon Department of Agriculture, and the United States uh, Forest Service. And we get grants from many other sources, included private foundations and uh, Metro PG corporations and others, including uh, donations from uh, individuals. Over time, these partnerships have produced waves of opportunities for the CRBC to perform restoration and outreach projects. The work of the Clackamas River Basin Council focuses on four areas. Watershed enhancement includes in-stream and riparian projects. The Clackamas River Basin Council has over two decades of proven results transforming the watershed. The bulk of our work is spent on in-stream and riparian projects. These projects take place on public or private property within 100 feet of a waterway and their purpose is to mimic the natural environment. We improve fish habitat, installing side channels, riffles, large wood structures to provide cover, resting pools, and spawning gravel. We remove fish passage barriers like undersized culverts, fords, and weirs, and install fish-friendly stream crossings such as bridges and arch coverts. We remove invasive weeds and plant streamside forests. We work with public and private landowners and partners to achieve these goals. Stream health monitoring is conducted with water quality sampling, macroinvertebrate collection and analysis, along with post-project completion monitoring that occur regularly with results reported. And that's uh, Susie Cloutier and our board member, John Borden, taking water quality sampling. Outreach and education are key to our council's activities as we engage community members in stewardship activities of the watershed, including educational events for all ages, work parties as seen in this photo, where Christmas trees are added to habitat structures, along with tours, multimedia presentations, and community outreach and more. And of course, uh, we uh, will always need our administrative support and fundraising activities. <clears throat> we currently perform restoration activities, uh, coordinating with over 15 partners who joined to establish the Clackamas Partnership to restore habitat for Clackamas populations of endangered and threatened fish species significant funding from the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board includes $3.8 million over six years from 2019 through to 2025 and requires additional funding support as match. We receive significant support from Metro, PGE, U.S. Forest Service, Warren Industries, and the Water Environment Services. And we continue to fundraise to support restoration projects to successfully achieve our goals and strategies to increase rearing and migratory habitat complexity and improve water quality in the river corridors and to achieve targets of the Lower Columbia River Plan that include large wood placements, side channel increases, riparian plantings, and off-channel and wetland complex increases. I will play a video for you of our, an example of our um, in-stream restoration construction project. Just needed to wait for it to load. Uh, shown in Eagle Creek. Um, it's shown for Eagle Creek near its confluence with the Clackamas main stem. It was completed in August with Liz Gilliam's coordination, where over 300 logs were placed into the main stem and side channels. The project added over half a mile in side channels, 3,500 linear feet of in-stream complexity from habitat structures, 
and native vegetation canopy cover that was planted earlier this year during 2021. The large wood placed is creating nooks and crannies that juvenile salmon and steelhead rely on to complete their life cycle. It is slowing down the flow, depositing those important gravels and reconnecting with the floodplain. Immediately after construction, fish were observed using the large wood. Fortunately, these structures remain safe from the Doughty fire, which swept through the area shortly after work was completed. Let's see how I do there. And our one large scale project that we developed is the Shade Our Streams, a multi-year riparian tree planting project to improve water quality in the Clackamas River Basin. In 2020, CRBC completed a, the 10-year program planting native trees and shrubs successfully, achieving a goal established with PGE and DEQ for streamside shade canopy. The shade program resulted in planting more than 369,000 native trees and shrubs along 30 stream miles, restoring streamside habitat at no cost to property owners. It was for the community benefit for us all. Shade Our Streams focus is to plant along streams that need the most help. Those areas that lack healthy habitats and are overrun with invasive weeds. Native trees improve water quality and create better habitat for plant, animal, and fish species. And for us all, right? The CRBC, we cannot say enough about how successful this project has been with uh, landowner involvement. Our uh, streamside landowners truly do hold the key to health of our river. Our council continues the Shade Our Streams program led by Ari Sindel with funding from PGE's Habitat Fund from West River Health Stewardship Program, the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board grant funding and generous donations to our Replant the Riverside campaign following the 2020 catastrophic wildfires. One topic that is becoming increasingly important as our region develops rapidly and use increases is degraded water quality. How do we assess water quality in the Clackamas watershed? Or how does Susie Cloutier and her volunteers assess water quality? Well, uh, they perform monitoring and reporting on channel characteristics, water quality sampling results, and the presence of macro invertebrates. They measure flows, pesticides, macro invertebrates, and basic characteristics such as temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, and turbidity. Outreach and education include sharing information about pesticides via fact sheets, presentations, and community outreach at events. Beyond restoration projects, the Clackamas River Basin Council also has an education and outreach arm. Susie Cloutier and Adam Spencer know how to engage and generate enthusiasm for all things outreach and education. We participate in community events such as celebrating water at Clackamas Community College, exhibit at community events and summer float events on the Clackamas and Willamette Rivers. We have assisted schools with setting up a Fish Eggs to Fry program, which is a national program offered by Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. And we also do one-on-one -on -one landowner education and assistance as requested in addition to general project tours and workshops such as living with wildlife, what's in my stream and naturescaping. A lot of our community level education comes from our stewardship programs. Examples of stewardship for the watershed are shown in these photos. Depicted first on the left is CRISP, Clackamas River Invasive Species Partnership. CRISP is both a partnership and a program that is dedicated to eradicating invasive weeds in the Clackamas River Basin. We are pleased to join the Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District and many other partners in this program. Streamside land, <clears throat> stream landowners can call us if they believe they have a high priority invasive weed on their property and we may be able to offer free services to er eradicate that weed to the benefit of all. The next photo 
shows a couple partying with pesticides. This is a pledge program to be pesticide free or pesticide wise. According to the National Coalition for Pesticide Free Lawns of the 30 commonly detected lawn pesticides in the US, 17 are detected in groundwater, 23 have the ability to leach into drinking water sources, 24 are toxic to fish and other aquatic organisms vital to our ecosystem, 11 are toxic to bees, and 16 are toxic to birds. The removal of pesticides from our watershed is a tangible action that any landowner can take. During the summer months, we also supply stash the trash bags along the Clackamas River to promote responsible river use. Placed along boat ramps, over 6,000 bags are used every year. Similar to the leave no trace when hiking on trails, the stash the trash bag program encourages river goers to pack it out. The public often learns about these programs through mailers or social media, but we believe that our first interactions with the public often come from our volunteer events. CRBC hosts seasonal volunteer events throughout the planting season. We've had somewhat of a hiatus during the pandemic in recognition of safe, uh, safe practices and uh, have begun um, getting out uh, socially distanced once again. We also place recycled Christmas trees in a side channel or along a creek. And volunteers even venture into removing invasive plants like English ivy. Our largest volunteer event is our annual Down the River Cleanup, which is held the first Sunday following Labor Day. That's in September and over 300 volunteers participate annually. What we really hope to accomplish with these events is a sense of connection to the river. We hope that by learning the names of the rivers and creeks and the species that live in and around them that volunteers will form a connection to the natural resources around them and grow to appreciate it and ultimately become an environmental steward themselves. Whether it's through continued involvement in volunteering, change, changing pesticide use, or some other behavior, we hope that after people participate in our events and programs, that they are compelled to protect the watershed. For when the river thrives, we all thrive, especially when we work together. And I want to thank you for participating tonight and sharing your interests. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have now. And after today, you may contact me or any of our staff team members to share your interests, get involved or ask questions. Did you have any questions? I think we had a few questions here. So one, uh, the first is, what is the name and purpose of the logs that were put in an area along Highway 224 that used to be a pond with lily pads? Did it work to save fish? I believe that location is the um, uh, Richardson Creek, a metro property that is for uh, naturalizing the area and um, promoting aquatic species. Uh, yeah. Any like other, add anyone else have comment? Yeah, I'd love to add a little to that as well. So the logs that were put in um, uh, uh, in that particular area, that's a cold water spring uh, that was being kind of superheated by uh, being adjacent to farmland. So there are several purposes for that uh, restoration project. One is to slow the, um, the flow of, of stormwater and runoff from the farming property The the farmer graciously uh, gave a chunk of his arable land over for this buffer area. It also keeps the water cool uh, so it can flow directly into Richardson Creek, which is one of our projects just downstream of there. Um, all those lily pads that were in that pond were actually incredibly invasive as well as the yellow flag iris. So as a resident of the watershed who drives by that every day, I was delighted to see those going away. And a nice, uh, fabulous, um, cold water um, influence uh, put back in Richardson Creek. So just telling you too that downstream of that were large wood structures, much like the ones that Cheryl had spoken about and a large 
um, project that we had for the Shade Our Streams program, which was planting a riparian forest. So we don't just, uh, we work in conjunction with our partners quite a bit uh, to make some pretty substantial uplift. Um, uh, the other question uh, that was uh, stated was, um, I am trying to create a program for young adults this summer within our watershed. Who should I contact to have a partnership with CRBC? <laughs> I'm going to leave that to Adam. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. I was, I was hoping you would. Yeah, hi, Chris. Um, I'll put my uh, email address there in the chat, and I'd love to work with you to create a pro program for young adults, and we'll figure out uh, what sort of COVID protocols we would need to have in order to make that happen. Um, but one of uh, my projects right now is a virtual tour of the watershed uh, for the uh, watershed health program. And uh, so I've been zooming into classes to present uh, a presentation about the whole watershed, um, but would happy to be working with you to uh, make a program where we can be in person and do some work on the watershed. So uh, my email address is adam at clackamasriver.org and uh, let's get in touch. And then uh, Kelly Grover asked, oh, she said, thank you for that explanation. Uh, there's a question from Ron Northway. Uh, will the history and future of Austin Hot Springs be covered during this ser series of presentations? Um, so David, do you know if any perhaps of the geology presentations would go over that or any of the policy ones? If I recall that area has been purchased by the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs, so we might be able to address that at, during that webinar or we could touch on it, you know, geophysically and geologically through uh, that, those, those sessions as well. But that, that is an interesting area and definitely worth talking about. I mean, that looks like it's all the questions we've seen come up in the chat. Um, so we'd be happy to stay on as well and answer other questions, but um, we also have a few announcements. So if uh, you are satisfied with your questions so far, um, we can just leave you with a notification for the next meeting, which will be two Tuesdays from now. So we're doing the conference every other Tuesday. Uh, and the next one is about the geology of the Western Cascades. Uh, and our presenter will be Sheila Alfson of Portland State University. Um, and I believe she's also the president of the Geological Society of the Oregon Country, or at least she was at one point. Um, so let me share the link to register. And uh, again, we will see if we can uh, make the registration streamlined as has been suggested. So here's the link to register for the next Zoom meeting on the 23rd. Um, and then we are also starting uh, a class of gardening for wildlife um, in which uh, we're working with the Clackamas Soil and Water Conservation District and the National Wildlife Federation uh, to teach classes about how to garden using native plants to attract native bugs and pollinators. Um, and Susie will be leading that class. So Susie, would you like to share uh, what people can expect in all Put the link to join that class in the chat as well. Sure. First, I'm going to say it is a free class, so it costs you nothing but your lovely time. Um, usually, we do this in person. We'll be doing this via Zoom over the course of two um, consecutive Wednesdays. So, if you haven't gotten enough of us on Tuesdays, you can get some more of us on Wednesdays. Um, this class covers a whole um, lot of stuff from. Uh, gardening with natives to um, rainwater and stormwater um, mitigation in the form of rain gardens. We'll teach about native hedgerows, beneficial insects, um, habitat requirements and needs. And we'll even, if we can, um, help folks. Uh, we'll give you an exercise to take home to map your own garden and make your own native scaping paradise at home. And then give a little bit of guidance uh, at the beginning of the second class to folks that might want that for their own garden and native scaping plan. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We love this class. It looks like we have a question from Alan asking, um, say I purchased a home uh, on Curran Creek in a new development. As a community, we own a portion of the Creek riparian area. 
I've seen further development increase creek flow and cause significant change and die off of trees. So it looks like more of a comment than a, than a question. Well, we can certainly address, if that's all right, I can jump in on this one. Um, Alan, if you'd like to contact me, I'd be happy to get you pointed in the right direction for someone to come out and take a look at that location and see if there might be something that can be done um, to help keep that riparian forest healthy uh, in light of increased flows. We know when we pave, we certainly increase the flow of water um, into our creeks and current is an important creek in our watershed. Um, building a healthy riparian forest is a big deal and keeping a healthy riparian forest is a bigger deal. So um, Adam just put my email address up there. Feel free to call with any questions like that. Be happy to help. Do you want me to finish up with the announcements, Adam, or? Oh, sure, was there more? Sorry, I thought that was all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just a couple more items. Um, just to let you know, you will get a follow-up email with all the links that you need to access the recording, um, get information about getting a continuing education certificate, all of those details. And I just really wanted to thank um, Cheryl McGinnis and David Bugney for their um, presentations tonight. And thank you to Senator Wyden for his work in protecting Oregon rivers. Um, also a thank you to our sponsors. So again, Clackamas Water Environment Services, Clackamas River Water Providers, and the Geological Society of the Oregon Country. Um, thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. And I just also wanted to say that as chair, I'm really proud of the accomplishments that Cheryl told you about tonight. Um, excited about upcoming projects that we have and wanted to just make a comment that this work isn't possible without support from partners, working together, from grant funding, and also from volunteers. So I hope that you learned something new tonight and maybe hope that you're even inspired to join us in either a volunteer planting, down the river cleanup, uh, look like there might be a few people interested in joining the board, let us know and we can talk about that, um, or getting involved in our watershed in another way. So I have a feeling that many of you will be out on the river this summer and I look forward to that. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight and we'll see you two Tuesdays from now on March 23rd.